Uh, hello, my name is Michael Grandy. I'm a professor at Providence College, and I'm going to be uh, recording a problem solution. Uh, the class that we have, this is MBA 603 at Providence College, called Accounting and Decision Making in Organizations. And the solution that we're going to look at is from a uh, problem. This is problem 7 dash 17, that's chapter 17, problem chapter seven, problem 17, from our textbook. And the textbook we're using is Managerial Accounting, Garrison, Noreen, and Brewis, 17th edition. And uh, the topic of this material is activity-based costing. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, share my screen with you. I'm going to walk through the, the problem talk about it a little bit, and then we'll go through the solution. The publisher's solution will explain it. Uh, it's kind of complex to be writing on a whiteboard. Uh, it may be a little easier to just see the uh, publisher's solution. So let me, let me go ahead and share my screen. And what you should be seeing there is, um, uh, information that's up on Sakai. Please note that the solution is shown on Sakai as well. So this is chapter seven, activity-based costing, and it's one, one problem that we're looking at here. Um, again, this is problem 7-17. And let's read it together and then we'll walk through it. Um, so Smoky Mountain Corporation makes two types of hiking boots the extreme and the pathfinder. Data, data concerning these two product lines appear below. So here's the problem we're about to go through. But remember, we are trying to find the most precise method by which to allocate manufacturing overhead. Product costs consist of direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Direct materials and direct labor are not in question. Those are clearly traceable. We can specifically get a really good idea of the amount, that is the quantity and price of direct materials and the quantity and price for direct labor. A third component of product cost, manufacturing overhead, has to be allocated. Now, when we looked at chapters two and three, under the title of job order costing, we saw a company that applied manufacturing overhead using one single plant-wide factory-wide allocation factor, where they took the total manufacturing overhead, which you recall includes indirect materials, indirect labor, and other factory costs. And they allocated those costs using one single activity base, one single denominator value. Most likely, it was um, direct labor hours, in some cases, direct machine hours. But the fact of the matter, it's one single allocation factor. And as we learned when we watched the PowerPoint presentation regarding activity based costing, we saw where a factory where a company looked at many different activities within the factory and began to allocate overhead based upon those activities. Now it becomes a real issue when we have two different products that are being made. So the question is what is the overall allocation overhead to product A versus product B? So going back to the problem, going back to Smoky Mountain Company, we know that they make two types of hiking boots, the Extreme and Pathfinder. And there's some information here regarding Extreme and Pathfinder. They give us sales price information. You can see the Extreme is the, uh, sells at a higher price at $140 versus $99 for Pathfinder. And we also know that we have direct materials per unit and direct labor per unit between the two products goes on to say that direct labor hours per unit are two for extreme and one for pathfinder. And the estimated annual production, 20,000 units for extreme and 80,000 for pathfinder. So very clearly, 
Pathfinder is their high volume product. That's the one they sell the most of. Extreme is a secondary product where they only sell 20,000 units. It goes on to say, the company has a traditional costing system in which manufacturing overhead is applied to units based upon direct labor hours. Data concerning manufacturing overhead and direct labor hours for the upcoming year appear below. So here we have all the information to calculate the single predetermined overhead rate, which is total estimated manufacturing overhead dollars divided by the total estimated activity base. You could take $1,980,000 divided by 120,000 direct labor hours, and you now have your predetermined overhead rate. So item one is asking us to do what? Using exhibit 7-13 within the chapter as a guide, compute product margins for the extreme and the Pathfinder products under the company's traditional costing method. So product margins, what is that? That is sales revenue minus cost of goods sold equals product margin, gross margin. Sales revenue, they told us the sales price per unit for each of these units, and they told us the number of units. They, then we need to subtract what? Product cost, cost of goods sold, direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. We know direct materials and direct labor, but we don't know manufacturing overhead. So let's take a look at the first calculation. This is the solution. This is the traditional costing method. And you can see the very first thing they did is what? Calculated the predetermined overhead rate, which works out to be $16.50 per direct labor hour. So we want to construct the and calculate gross margin, sales revenue, minus cost of goods sold. The extreme was selling 20,000 units. Pathfinder, 80,000 units. So we want to take price per unit times the number of units, quantity times price, if you will. So for the extreme, we know that the sales price is $140 per unit. 20,000 units, total sales revenue, $2,800,000. We also know that Pathfinder has 80,000 units. The sales price there was $99 per unit. Hence, total sales revenue, $7,920,000. Direct materials and direct labor, again, for extreme, 20,000 units times $72 per unit, that's the direct materials cost per unit, 1,440,000. Pathfinder, their direct materials cost is $53 per unit, times 80,000 units, 4,240,000. Direct labor for extreme, it says here that the direct labor per unit is $24 times 20,000 units, $480,000. It goes on to say that Pathfinder, the direct labor per unit, $12 per unit times 80,000 units, $960,000. Fairly straightforward. And then lastly, manufacturing overhead is applied on the basis of direct labor hours, Again, quantity times price. It says here that it takes two direct labor hours for extreme times 20,000 units times $16.50, right? It's $16.50 per direct labor hour. It takes two hours per unit times the number of units, $20,660,000. For a Pathfinder, it takes one hour per unit times 80,000 units times $16.50, 1.320. Sales price minus total manufacturing cost, materials, labor, and overhead. You can see that 
the extreme, which is their low volume product, has a product margin of $220,000. And that Pathfinder, their high volume product, has one million four. So that's calculation of product margin using the traditional costing method. Let's go back to the instructions in the problem. It does number two. It says the company is considering replacing its traditional costing system with an activity-based costing system that would assign its manufacturing overhead to the following four activity cost pools. The other cost pool includes organization sustaining costs and idle capacity. So they have now given you what? They have given you the cost pools and the activity or the cost drivers. Let's note, total manufacturing overhead is $1,980,000. That number has not changed. It's still total manufacturing overhead, $1,980,000. It's just what? They broke them down into the cost pools. The first cost pool is supporting direct labor, and they're allocating supporting direct labor based upon direct labor hours. It makes sense, right? So right in the margin, I would say calculate the activity rate. Total cost divided by total activity. Not the individual activity, because you can very well see here that they have broken down the direct labor hours between the two products, between Extreme and Pathfinder. 40,000 direct labor hours for Extreme, 20,000 units times two hours per unit. In Pathfinder, 80,000 hours, which is 80,000 units times one hour per, for a total of 120. Their second cost pool is batch setups. And they're gonna allocate that cost pool based upon the number of setups. They estimate total setups to be 300. And that's allocated 200 setups to extreme 100 setups to Pathfinder, and they have allocated a total of $495,000 to that cost pool. The third activity is product sustaining, and they're allocating that based upon the number of products. There's two products, one each, pretty straightforward. And they are not allocating the other cost of $99,000, okay, they just, for some reason can't find a way to allocate it, so they just leave it there. I disagree with that approach, but they do it. So what are they asking? Using Exhibit 711 in the textbook as a guide, compute the product margins for Extreme and Pathfinder using activity-based costing. So what we need to look at here, let's roll forward to the activity-based costing. The first step is for you to calculate the activity rates. You only have three activities. Please note it is the cost pool divided by total activity, not the individual activity, the total activity. So you can clearly see for supporting direct labor, if $783,600 allocated to that cost pool divided by the cost driver, of 120,000 direct labor hours, the activity rate, $6.53 per direct labor hour. Their second cost pool is batch setups. They have allocated $495,000 to that. There are 300 setups in total, 1,650 per batch setup. And the third category is product sustaining. They have two, they're gonna allocate $301,000 to each product. So based upon that, we now then need to prepare the, and calculate product margins. Sales revenue stays the same, that doesn't change. Direct materials, and direct labor do not change. The only things that change is the allocation of manufacturing overhead. And I've highlighted them here in yellow, and I'll show you how we calculate them in a second. But simply, it's the activity rate 
multiplied times the activity for that particular product. So let's take a look at supporting direct labor for extreme. We have $261,000. So what I did here in this bottom chart is I've added this chart where I break down for extreme and then for Pathfinder. So what you see here is the amount that's allocated for extreme is the activity. Remember, supporting direct labor is allocated based on direct labor hours. The direct labor hours for extreme was 40,000 hours. Multiplied times the activity rate for supporting direct labor, which we got from up here, $6.53. They've allocated $261,200 for supporting direct labor to extreme. That's where they get that number from. With regard to batch setups, you go back to the activity data for extreme, and they specifically said there were 200 setups for extreme. The activity rate, which we calculated up here, 1,650. It's $330,000 of batch setups allocated to extreme, and that's the number we put in the gross margin calculation. And then product sustaining is one product. The rate was 301,200, which you see from the top here, and they put that in. So those are where those numbers come from. They take the same approach for Pathfinder, Direct labor hours is 80,000 direct labor hours for Pathfinder. The rate continues to be the same at 653. They come up with 522.4. Batch setup, there's only 100 setups for Pathfinder. Multiply times that activity rate, they come up with 165,000. So that's the allocation. So what you now see is you see a comparison here. Remember, Extreme was their low volume product, selling 20,000 units. Pathfinder was their high volume product, selling 80,000 units under activity-based costing, which is supposedly a more accurate method for applying manufacturing overhead. They have a product margin of negative 12.4 versus Pathfinder positive 1731. Let's go back to activity-based costing. See what they're saying here. They actually thought they had a profit, a positive margin with regard to the extreme 220. It's really a loss using a more accurate system. Now you see what they did here. They did not include the other costs, I put them here. So in essence, you have a combined product margin of six, 1 million 620, which is no different than this. It's still a gross product margin of 1 million 620, because you're still using the same revenue and you're still allocating the same manufacturing overhead. It's just simply how it's allocated between the two products. When you have multi-product company, the allocation of manufacturing overhead between the two products is important because you want to know whether you're making or losing money on that product line. And it would certainly appear as if they are losing money on the extreme. Now, this other chart here is simply a continuation. All they're doing is showing you how the overhead is allocated. It's not terribly important for this third part. But what we're gonna do is we will, we're gonna have a synchronous class and we're gonna look at another problem on activity-based costing and then we'll talk about that one. So thank you very much. And that's the end of this.